welcome to the Reloading Podcast here on the Firearms Radio Network. Presented by Patriot Patch Company and Camarado. How's everybody doing tonight? That is an awesome notification tone from somebody's phone. Yeah, just a minute. Is that yours or is that Ray's? It's mine. Ah. Uh, I think Maniac is absolutely appropriate for describing Paul Loud. Sharonda, what's eating? Oh, that's not me this time. <laughs> that sounds like Ray and Nick. It's not mine. You didn't hear the Roadrunner. It's not mine. Uh, it must be Paul. Yep, Paul was making that noise. Probably his microphone rubbing against his face. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Hey, uh, Clifford Zach, I don't know. I think primers are okay in my neighborhood. Well, at least in my my area, my, my reloading area. I can get primers all day long. Large rifle, small rifle, small pistol. I haven't seen large rifle, but I can get pretty much oh, anything I need for about 75 bucks. A thousand. It's a legend. Oh my Don't goodness. worry, he, he scares people like that all the time, even if they know he's coming. <laughs> check this ID card. It's like Christmas. Hey, Jason. Howdy. They finally What's got up, internet Jason? to where Jason's at in the in, in Idaho. <laughs> Mama, let you online. Watch out now. You must have been good this week. Yep. <laughs> Paul, you're muted. He finally got all those primers up in his uh, his uh, workshop. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, the price of primer sure isn't coming back down to normal. No, I didn't think it would. Primers normal. <clears throat> this is the new normal. Yeah. Yeah. And you better buy them while you can because they're going to go up again. So just a warning because that's what happens. They yep. will find an excuse. Somebody will find an excuse somewhere to jack the price again. So, um, Jason, is that the echo from you now? I don't know. Testing one, two, three. No, maybe it was just a weird thing. I'm hearing voices in my head. Holy crap. Uh, Spud, you're in Canada, though, aren't you? I think he's in Canada, Spud76 is. So, but yeah, that's a lot. So. Ooh, 200 bucks for a thousand. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, Canada, it's going to automatically be more expensive because it's Canada. So, you know, there's extra cost incurred to get them up there, import taxes and tariffs and crap like that. Plus the fact that there's the conversion between American dollars and Canadian dollars. So it's not a one to one. Plus they have a VAT tax too. Paul Loud, you're not the mainer, you're the maniac. Get it right. Excuse me. So, what's everybody been up to? Nothing here. Sharenda? I got lots of stuff. Um, I need to get um, 
range access. I'm gonna try to join a private range. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, we got lots of events that we're planning with uh, Wilderness because we expanded out to different states. So, really, have, awesome. Yeah, we're in five states now. So awesome. We've been busy with that, and I'm trying to low key get me some few pieces of camping gear because at some point this spring I'm going to go MIA for a few days so nice. just to have some me time that's pretty much it about to pull out the cream more and start tinkering it again since it's getting warmer and daylight's longer mm-hmm. pretty much it other than harassing y'all here and there So, uh, Jason. Yes, sir. How you been? Been well. Um, I have been trying to go load uh, load up some thirty eight special for my mother in law because I just re up my uh, <clears throat> membership to the uh, range, and she wants to go. And the weather's starting to get nice, so we're getting the fever, but. Every night I have an excuse not to go out there and do it. Because <laughs> that happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I got a little bit of cleaning done in the uh, organized in the reloading room. Um, not much, though. So Nick and Ray, what you been up to? Good. Uh, picked up a good new gun. Well, technically two new guns. Okay. Uh, one of them was a coworker did some work on it for him. It needed uh, had a large crack um, that I fixed. Um, yep, Jeff. Jeff, do you have my? If you have my email, uh, yeah, shoot him over my way. If not, um, if you're on the Discord, reach out to me. Uh, but I can get you those. I can answer anything you got on that. But yeah, I got that from him for a really good price. It's a uh, Argentine 1909 cavalry carbine. And then we went to a gun show over the weekend. One of the best gun shows I've been to in quite a while. Um, didn't plan on buying a gun because I just bought the Argentine. Took a little bit of cash, not a lot. And next thing I know, I'm walking through and I find this little private sales table. And I look at this kind of like, oh, okay. Next time I look at the price, it's like half the price. I'm like, okay. Of course, you got to ask if they'll go down. They knock 50 bucks off. I'm like, okay. I couldn't pull my wallet out fast enough, and Dad will agree with me. Just couldn't pass on it, that's for sure. And yeah. Other than that, I uh, had some special order dies come in uh, last week from uh, CH4D. Um, they're uh, 8 by 53 Murata for a rifle of mine. Um, they were... They actually had them in stock, which was nice. Um, and uh, Othias from CN Arsenal um, was do, talking about that on uh, one of his podcasts for his Patreon members. And I'd had these on hold for a while. And I'm like, I think it's time to order those before somebody else picks them up. And if that's the only set and they go back ordered for who knows how long. Um, other than that, uh, finished my workbench in the garage last week. So I'll be able to. Tear parts are gonna tear guns apart out there, clean them out there, so I don't get the reloading bench super dirty. Um, picked up some powder. I know both you and I did. I got mm -hmm. uh, some IMR forty two twenty seven, which is from what I've been seeing is a nice uh, cast bullet powder. Um, and I know you got you got a pound of uh, what was it? Accurate Accurate forty eight? No, forty sixty four. Forty sixty four. So got some. And these uh, prices are hard to beat from this shop here locally. Yeah. Bought some brand like, new eight millimeter brass. Yep. Yeah, this is one pound under fifty bucks. I know yours was even cheaper. Yours was like forty three dollars a pound. Yeah. So, and they they're even they have stuff cheaper than that. And so, Shrenda, if if you want a nice reloading shop, I'll let you know. Just slide that on in my DM. I will. <laughs> <clears throat> You probably already been there, so. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Did catch a cold while I'm out of here, but other than that, 
Not from me. I've been healthy as a bug. Mm. Hey, I was muted. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Healthy as a bug. <laughs> Must be an Illinois thing. Could be. Could I mean, be. I'm not from Illinois anymore, so. <laughs> yeah, but you've spent more time there than anywhere else. So. Yeah, unfortunately, I can have to say that. Ugh. Anyway. Shrinda, what range are you looking at joining? Pioneer. Yep. They got two. They got the outdoor and indoor one. Oh, I know what you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. It's also close to home. So for you, hard. absolutely. For me, it's way too far. Yeah. I still need to um join the uh the other one out in Ottawa eventually, but it just didn't make sense to yeah. go join it now. And I'm not nowhere near shooting at a thousand yards. So yeah. well, they just got cleared out to a mile. I know. Don't don't tell me these things. I I know that, but I try not to hear it. <laughs> well, the the shop that has all the reloading stuff, I made a connection with about a, not even a month ago. Was in there on a Saturday, and a guy was in there. I was talking to them, told them I moved to the area a while back, and looking for a place to shoot. And uh, one of the guys in there, it's like, hey, I'm a member here, so he gave me his contact information. It's, it's uh, Mill Creek over there in Desoto, so. Yeah, you need to go because you got to get two. I can't remember if it's one or two referrals. So they want to see referrals. you shoot twice. Yeah, so that, I'm going to try to shoot matches here soon. If I can yeah. shoot matches and maybe get one of those guys. Yeah, it's a nice range. So you better. Well, it's the old Hodgson range. So mm -hmm. it's it's really well up kept. So speaking of ranges, uh, if you're looking for what ranges are in your area, um, and I have found out that it does not list all of them in the area. Um, but if you go to www.wheretoshoot.org, it is put out by the NSSF and it lists ranges. You can put in a zip code and then you can do a, a, a mileage search and find ranges. Um, I have figured out that it doesn't list all of them because we were doing that the other day and it does not list the range that I usually frequent. So, um, but a lot of them, it'll say whether they're an NSSF member or not. So um, I was under the impression it used to list all of them, but I guess it doesn't anymore. So I don't know who dropped the ball on that. If it's the ranges that have to contact NSSF or if NSSF is supposed to be finding that out. Um, I'm going to check with them and find out though. So, but so uh, basically tonight we're going to kind of put the bow on basic straight wall, answer a couple of questions and then kind of do a preview talking about some of the equipment that you need to do more down the rabbit hole um, hand loading of straight walls. So um question we got here is from running with scissors uh he said what up anyone have any experience with seiko brass uh, a friend of mine gave me 50 once fired from finland lapua that would have been my thought it's lapua so there is your answer on that one i know i know it's that horrible 308 caliber so uh Running with scissors, if you uh, you know don't want to load that cartridge because it's you know it's just a horrible cartridge, um, you can send that brass to me and I'll I'll dispose of it properly for you. Oh, that's so kind of you to sacrifice. Hey, I am here to help. All right. <laughs> I want to make sure my fellow reloaders stay safe. Oh shit! <clears throat> <Excuse me. laughs> <laughs> right, Jason. I've always been about making sure my fellow reloaders stay safe. Like I thought that Jason Smith and Wesson 500 was too much for him. So I tried to, I tried to, you know, help him out with that. <laughs> it didn't work very well, but I tried. <laughs> so. That explains why he hasn't been on in a long time. Yeah. Something like that. No, it's because he lives out in the middle of nowhere. 
And I think his wife was going crazy with, was it a bulldozer or jack something? Something about her riding around on construction equipment, digging holes in things, having the time of her life. Oh, that was She likes tractor. to play on my tractor. Yeah. <laughs> she thinks my tractor's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Nick, I got those pictures. I'll send them to you. Perfect. Uh, I can blow more in your hair off. Goofy Paul. So, um, Ken, I got to get the 3030 done first. That's the answer to that. So. Once I get the 30-30 ready for hunting, then I'll worry about the 6-5. Uh, Jason, question for you? No, I have not. I did buy a scope for it. I haven't mounted it yet. Um, recently, one of my coworkers bought a 338 Lapua, and he was asking me about powders and projectiles and whatnot and so i got online and i was looking at powders and i literally couldn't get over this sticker shock um i'm a little bit too old school for today's world i think <laughs> and uh why just because you can only load four rounds with what pound of powder come on yeah <laughs> powder's nuts um, you should get a hold of Sharp, Chris Sharp, because he's mm -hmm. got quite a few good loads for that. So, does he? Yeah. Okay. So, can I say uh, something real quick, Mike? For Jeff, yeah. I am very jealous on that gun. <laughs> I have been looking for one for a while. You don't <laughs> see me, so in that condition, at least. What is it? That is a. Uh, I don't want to get the model wrong. Spanish. Uh, the suspense is killing us. The Spanish 1895 Calvary Carbine. What caliber is it in? In 7 millimeter Mauser. So 7 by 57? Yep, 7 by 57. Which nice. can be found at most... Sporting goods Most sporting goods stores. It's a modern hunting cartridge still. Mm -hmm. and it's like 54. I don't see 7 by 57 really going anywhere anytime soon. No, because it's still good. It's like it's like it's like six five Swede. It yeah, just that's works. another one. It won't go anywhere. It just works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that Saturday on the way home from the gun show. It's what cartridge old military cartridges are really not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. And those are the big three. Mm-hmm. So, Paul, I'm guessing this is directed to you. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Since Jim's not here, you'd be the older statesman. Uh, running with scissors says, I got a question for our old cur or curmudgeon, too. Uh, see the UR video shooting 308 way, way, way over pressure? Cra crazy? No. Don't do this at home. What video is he talking about? Ultimate Reloader did a uh, uh, pressure uh, test oh, okay. with uh, Alpha Brass and 308 and a, uh, a, a very heavy bullet and tried to see how far they could take it. And they were up in the 80,000 PSI range. Hmm. And it held. Oh, well, it should. Yeah. 308 should hold to 80,000 PSI. That's not a big deal. The brass should hold 80,000. Well, brass slows at uh, 70, so... Yeah, um, but, I mean, you're still you're still talking it should hold together. At, yeah. at 80,000, 80, it shouldn't come apart. Well, it didn't come apart. So... You know, it didn't come apart. They started, you know... 
they really didn't see any ejector swipe or uh, um, uh, any uh, bad, real bad things happen. Mm -hmm. So, again, it was uh, um, with Alpha Brass and uh, Burger Bullets and uh, yeah. I don't remember the powder, but uh, yeah, they uh, they pushed it pretty hard. So, and running with scissors thinks that they were over ninety thousand, if memory serves correctly. He yeah. Says. So, I mean, that's a possible possible thing, but um, theoretically, most of your and this is theoretically most of your modern rifle cartridges, which three hundred eight and thirty odd six are considered. Um, are are supposed to handle eighty thousand psi. Now, um, would I grab a Perry sixty four Winchester Model seventy and try and do that? No. Would I try and uh, buy you know one of the cheaper off the shelf rifles today? No. If I built an action, sure. Um, but theoretically, they're supposed to handle eighty thousand. What happens? if you have a cheaper action is it'll shear the lugs off the bolt and the bolt will go flying. And usually you're behind the bolt. So you catch a bolt in the throat. So bad things can happen if you try and do that at home. So as we said, do not try this at home. And I'm sure Gavin had a uh, lengthy uh, warning on that video too. Um, I've met Gavin a couple times. He does some really good work. I honestly don't have time to watch YouTube videos at all. I wish I did. I wish I had a job where I could sit and watch videos all day long, but I don't. So, um, but thank you for sharing running with scissors. Um, and you know, just a comment here, it was a custom action Yeah, with, with one of his custom barrels and, uh, it was tight. Okay. I mean, that gun was had, uh, you know, about, uh, two thousands, uh, of, of head space and that was it. I mean, you know, built for it, it. It was built for it. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the, you know, that's what I was kind of saying too, is it's built yeah. for it. Then yeah, away you go. I'm definitely not going to go to your local gun show and pick uh, up an old, uh, an old uh, 308 off the shelf that I don't know how old it is and, and try and do that with it. No. But yeah, you build a modern custom action and hold it tight to the tolerances, and uh, um, yeah, you can you can do it. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't do it with a two lug though. I definitely have to have a, a three lug. Well, he did it with a two lug. You know, well, I'm um, just saying me personally. Yeah, he did it with a two lug, and um, but it was a fully enclosed bolt head. I mean, so. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of gas escape. You're right. I mean, if anything let loose, and I don't think anything can let loose in it the way it was uh, chambered and, and, mm -hmm. and put up, put together. There was no open area where the bolt could, uh, you know, where uh, the case could flow through and, uh, and, and move. So, hey, you know, like I say, I have some, I, I tested some 308 loads that were, hot and mm -hmm. i won't give you the you know numbers other than that was you know with rl15 yeah and uh um i had uh the case head move okay yep. so that happens so i i my recommendation is if you watch youtube videos uh go to ultimate reloader watch this video um and then go to Kentucky ballistics and see what happens when you have too much pressure in a rifle when he blew up his 50. So, Damn near died. Yep. So uh, I, th that's what I'm going to recommend. Uh, it's, and it's not to freak everybody out, but it's to remind you, because let's face it, you do something long enough, you get complacent. Okay. We all do. Um, it's just the nature of humans. They get comfortable. We want to be comfortable and we get to a comfortable point, like say, you know, progressive press, you're used to just, you know, tossing your components in and pulling the lever and away you go. 
um, you get to a point where you get complacent and not necessarily cocky, but complacent. And things can go bad very quickly in this in this hobby. So you need to kind of be reminded every once in a while of uh, of why you can't become complacent in this hobby. Um, thankfully, you know, uh, Kentucky Ballistics, Scott did not die from that. Um, but it just showed, you know, that's that's a, a very clear evidence of what happens when you have a horribly overpressured round. Mm -hmm. So, and when I go out to the range, I'm out there testing these loads. I'm testing the case head expansion, you know, with it. And I'm checking to see where I'm at. And I've measured the case beforehand and after. And if I see something that's bad, I can stop. It's not like I'm just running the, 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 the rounds through the gun. I I know where, where it's at, and if I see too much case head expansion, I will stop. So here's a question for you. Have you had a case where the case head expanded, but the primer didn't get pushed back and flattened? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. I don't remember where or when. I wish I did. But we were talking about safety and reloading and how sometimes the primer doesn't always indicate uh, overpressure. Oh, definitely. So. Especially if you're using a small rifle primer in a, in a 308 size case. Um, yeah, it will, uh, it will not uh, move the primer like, you, like you're thinking it would, giving you a flat primer. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but the case head will, will, that will tell you where you're, uh, you know, where it's going real hot. Mm -hmm. And if it moves too much, time to pull a pin, mm -hmm. which means you stop shoot. Yeah. And you pull that ammo. Right. What you got there, Nick? Nothing, just a piece of three or three. Oh, you, just your fidget. It's a fidget. fidget it's a fidget. Spinner. It's been a day. Yeah. It's been a week already, and it's only Tuesday. Ugh. <laughs> well, I measure case set expansion with a blade micrometer. Okay, and I measure before and after, and if I get more than five thou of case head expansion that's a definite stop 100 percent. if i start to see it creep up and get two thou i'll stop right there but five is is the maximum i will go in my 308 with a remington 700 action that i know how it's i know how it's fitted and what what the 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 dimensions of the case and chamber are. I would not do that with any, just any uh, off the shelf gun. Paul, do you use that, uh, that two and five thousands as a, as, as a standard for all calibers or is that just 308? All calibers. All calibers. Okay. All calibers. Someone wants to see how you measure a case head. I think it's good for, you know, uh, especially if somebody's tuning in to get the end of the, uh, or the wrap up on the straight wall, then it's kind of just something that, you know, your average person won't see. So. It gets measured, right? at the junction of the extractor groove and the, and the case. You're and not on camera. It gets measured right at the extractor groove. Okay. Okay. Right on the edge of it. And that will tell you, it'll give you a reading. This one is four, uh, four sixty nine one. 
So you're and talking about right where the extractor group starts is yep. where you're measuring. Yep. Now, okay. So everybody sees that. Um, it's right on the main body of the brass as close to the extractor groove without going into the groove. Yep. And see if I can show a you see where the shiny part is and the not so shiny part almost looks like a belt on a belted cartridge yeah sure does 308 that makes sense then. so that's where the case head is okay and once if that starts to move You've reached the limits of your uh, your gun. Paul, why a blade micrometer over a normal micrometer? And I don't know what that terminology is. Okay. Blade micrometer. It's thin. So you're not measuring any part of the case head. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to get a. There we go. So you're not getting ahead of the, of the case where the. Uh, the body of the case will expand. And you can't. Uh, You can you can be measuring that and not the case head itself. Okay, I understand now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, blade micrometer is definitely worth the uh, purchase. So if if you're gonna push the limits, yep. If yeah, you're not I mean, gonna, if, if you're not gonna push the limits, you're gonna load the book, um, and even then with the book. Being what a book, um, you still may want it, but right. So, um, over on Instagram, we had uh, a gentleman or person twenty twenty four underscore Esteban uh, says, uh, "I appreciate your live podcast. I live in California and I'm having trouble finding primers for five five six two two three. Any sources?" And then third, thank you for knowledge and time. Um, I, my first question was, can you get them shipped into California? Because, uh, I know with all their stupid laws, I didn't know if they'd ban that or not. I know they'd looked at banning ammo shipping in. So, um, my two that I thought off the pop, top of my head are Powder Valley and Graf and Sons. Um, other ones? Mid-South. 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 Mid Natchez. And Natchez. Natchez. Yeah. They run free hazmat all the time, I know. So, uh, um, Natchez is N A T C H E Z. Brownells runs Brownells, maybe. Time. I'm yeah. on their text club, so whenever they do run specials, I get those. Uh, and Midway, I mean, Midway will, will, yeah. will yeah. have them too. Um, um, if you've got a Cabela's or Bass Pro or a Shields or an Academy, depending um, on where he's at in California. There's a Shields in Reno slash Sparks. Sparks. Yeah. 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 Depending on where he's at. If he's up in the. Uh, uh, he's got a Bass Pro in the Central Valley. I forget what town. It's a big Bass Pro. Uh, there's one down in. Uh, are you talking about the one in the Inland Empire, Jason? No. Um, down by the racetrack. Oh, so he's no, in this... he's LA Bakerfield. Okay, so oh. um yeah. Um oh, well it's, I'm very unfamiliar with that area. It's either Ontario yeah. or um it's right by where the California yeah. Speedway is. Well, where the giant hole in the ground is that it is currently because they're redoing it. Um there's a bass pro there. Um 
So I want to say I want to say that's Ontario or Riverside, one of the two. Um, you can use ammoseek.com or running of scissors said shootingbot.com. Mm. Um, okay, Midway has them in stock. Um, Mid South has them in stock. Um, <coughs> Powder Valley has them in stock. If he's in LA, Bakersfield, there's a. Uh, I'm looking up on Google. There's a place called Angeles Reloading Store. Nice. Up by uh, uh, Santa Clara, Santa Clarita area. Looks like it's Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, I've been there. So oh, that's right near the Speedway, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, what it's I not said. far from Fontana. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is it's it's right by the Speedway. Yeah, there used to be a plant there I used to go to. So, well, actually, it's not a speedway currently. No, no, no. It's currently under renovations. So. There's also a Orange County Reloading Supplies. So. That's nice. A... Now, where are you finding this all listed at? Just Google. I just okay. put reloading stores near LA, Los Angeles. Google okay. is your friend. Can be. Can be. You're right. Can be your friend. So. Graf and Sons has primers in stock. Yep. Yeah. So. So they're there. They're out there. Yep. All right. So, did you answer what the maximum expansion you would want? Five thou. Five thou? Okay. Two is better. Yeah. So, that's point zero zero five or point zero zero two. So, all right. So, uh, we kind of finished up last week showing you how to seat bullets, how to charge the case, seat bullets, and then take the flare out. Um, I was trying to get a uh, factory crimp die from Lee for nine and could not come up with one for this week's show. I know, shocker, something for nine millimeter not, not being in stock somewhere. Um because I wanted to show you what that crimp looks like too. But if you've ever bought factory, uh, most of your factory uh, ammo, like especially your mills, your uh, like five, five, six stuff has that style crimp. So um, it kind of looks that way, but um, yeah, I don't know why he asked what you're drinking, Jason. I, I just don't. Uh, I mean, <laughs> did he forget? I do drink bourbon on occasions. Yeah. So is that Bombay Sapphire? No, that's uh, Green Bottle. What the heck is that called? Oh, I know what you're talking about. I don't drink Tan gin, but Tangeray. 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 So. He's on the cheap stuff. I think Bench Addicts got too many zeros in that first number. Mm hmm So. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically, the, the key to loading straight wall cartridges, uh, unless you're loading full metal jacket, is you want to flare that case mouth, and then you want to use a crimp to get that case mouth back to where it's supposed to be. So that that's kind of the biggest thing there 
Um, otherwise, you can shave bullets. Um, I had one that I shaved kind of on purpose and because uh, we reseeded it. So uh, I don't know where I put it. So, oh, here it is. Um, so you can kind of see how there's that extra piece of copper there. Um, lead shows up better, but that's that's what that is. So, but so yeah, that's why you kind of want to expand that case and then in um, full metal jacket, the the actual jacket on the that they use on the projectile is strong enough that it won't um, shear off. So. So that's kind of one of those things you don't have to worry about. So uh, with that, but otherwise, you know, those are coded. Um, you still load them like an FMJ, but obviously with them being, they're Barry's bullets, obviously with them being, um, with the, the light coating of copper, um, as I proved, you can shave it. So, and the big thing is, is uh, take some time to check your cartridge overall length um, from time to time, especially if you're loading it on a single stage. Um, but even, even on a progressive, um, you know, check every tenth or whatever you want to do. Um, the biggest thing for any reloader is if you stop and for whatever reason, don't assume you can just start right back up. Um, you want to double check things, make sure that it's going to be safe for you to stop back, start back up. Make sure you don't have a charge in a case already, you know, powder in the case, and then you put another charge on top of it or no powder and you put the bullet on top of it. So both of those can lead to very bad situations. Um, on a handgun cartridge, there usually is enough pressure from the primer alone to actually put the bullet into the barrel. And now you have a barrel obstruction. And then you try and send a full, uh, full load behind that and things can go bad quick. So everybody's seen the whole um, revolver side, you know, side view where it's got the nine projectiles in it. Um, my understanding on that is as cowboy action loads, plus it's a revolver, so it vents the gas out separate. You would never get away with that in a semi-automatic. So they're dropping like flies. So. Uh, 2024 underscore Esteban says, I want to learn how to cast metal and use it for reloading any resources. Um, there's some stuff out there on YouTube. Um, otherwise, um, shoot us an email, reloadingpodcast at gmail.com, and we'll get you onto the Discord. Yeah, we have a whole sub thread for casting. casting yeah. Yeah. Um, and eventually, we are going to be doing a uh, thing on casting. Just so someone notices, there is a bulge in this barrel here. Mm -hmm. That's from having a stuck round in it. Oops. Oops. Is that a paperclip barrel, Paul? What? Is that a staple gun barrel? Uh, no. P239. Oh. oh, it looked like a square top for like a Glock. Uh, SIG P239. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes sense. That, yeah, that is that not makes... a uh, staple gun. <laughs> I, I I thought at first, I'm like, that looks like a square top. Did, did yeah. you stick that one in there or did somebody else? Uh, my daughter did. Uh oh. Uh, darn. Those are the worst. You thought. 
You thought you were gonna get him for a second there. I did. I was like, wait, <laughs> what? That's Square Tom looking. Nope. Not, no. Nope. nope. Okay. So that kind of puts a, a bow on um on on the whole beginning straight wall. So now we're gonna move into more advanced. Um like we said, we mentioned straight wall. Most people think of straight wall strictly as pistol cartridges, but there's a lot of rifle cartridges out there that are straight wall too, and they're coming out with new ones all the time, i.e. 350 Legend, 400 Legend, 360 Buckhammer, um, or three that I think of off the top of my head. So, Jeff Daniels, what's a better scale to use if I was going to use a digital scale? I have a Gem Pro 250 and the new Frankfurt Platinum Series Precision Powder Scale for trickling up. I'd stick with the Gem Pro 250 if it's one of the old ones. I mean, if he really wants to get serious about it. Yeah, if he wants to get serious about with it, uh, you know, uh, FX uh, 120i, um, you can go to uh, uh, Creedmoor Sports. They have a new scale that's out there. Um, there's, uh, there's a number of, of, of nice scales that are, uh, that will do the job for you that'll weigh down to the uh, two hundredths of a grain and still be in the $400 budget. So Quadfather 504 FPV wants to know, is anybody familiar with SMP 735W powder? I'm trying to do some research on it right now. It looks like it was a pull-down powder. That's okay. what it looks like. One of the forms, it looks like it's a sniper hide. Somebody did some testing and looks like it is 3 to 5% faster than H335. Um I haven't made that thread just ended. Um, that's really all I see at the moment. I wonder if it's a derivative of uh, WC735. It probably is when it's the same numbers. It probably. But here's somebody who's testing 55 grain FMJ. Doesn't tell me anything there. Um, while you're doing that, uh, 2024 underscore Esteban, uh, one of the guys over on Rumble says that the Rancho Cucamonga Bass Pro has small rifle primers in stock. There you go. So, you know what I think you should do is you should just stop listening right the heck now and run over there. <laughs> run over there. <laughs> Well, you should drive. I mean, you might be in good enough physical shape to run. I know I'm not. But you should drive over there and get them while they got them, you know. We don't mind. So, you still got two hours, at least. So, Jeff Daniels said it's an older Gem Pro. I want to upgrade better eventually. But for now, these two are my options. Eventually going to Andy. So, uh, yeah. Paul said Gem Pro. See if it's an older one. Yep. Um, I'm wondering which Frankfurt Arsenal scale that is. Let me look at that. Uh, the new Frankfurt Platinum Series Precision Powder Scale. Eh, I've not seen that. Hmm. Jeff, Jeff, the... Only way you can tell what is more accurate is to put a check weight on them and check your load with the check weights. Only way you can tell. But I would think that uh, the Gem Pro is going to show you uh, more accuracy than the, uh, the Frankfurt. Well, Frank Frankfurt only goes down to a tenth of a grain. 
the gem pro should still do uh two hundredths of a grain. Platinum series position scale with case. All right. Um, yeah, that one I don't know enough about. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say Gem Pro just because of the way that that scale looks. Um, it's probably not going to be as accurate as the Gem Pro. So. Yeah, from what I can see, it looks like it's an old uh, military pull down 556 M193 pull down powder. From what I'm seeing here on this. I don't want to manufacture this was. Oh, SMP. General Dynamics, who own them. So. Sounds like it's similar to CFD 223. So it looks like here. Okay, I found it on a burn rate chart. Oh, it is? Wow. Yeah. Where is it compared to? 735. Hang on, okay, I just had it. So he said, uh, I ordered some loads from a company and had problems with none of the rounds chambering, so I have to pull all 100 rounds, and, and they said that's what they loaded them with, but I can't find any load data. Well, first off, I'm going to tell you, if you ordered loaded rounds from a company and they don't fit <laughs> send them back mm -hmm. that's not your job to dick with them if you wanted to dick with them you'd have loaded them by hand in the first place you ordered them they should fit <laughs> if they don't then you need to make that company make them fit that's my personal opinion you can do what you want um so um, and it looks like uh, Vista Outdoors got another. Oh, MNC Capital uh, increased their offer to three billion dollars. Um, and let's see here. Oh, because. Uh, uh, Vista is uh, under a U.S. national security review um, based on the uh, wanting to sell it to the Czechoslovak group. So, <laughs> so yeah, who didn't think that was going to happen? Come on, seriously. And I think Jeff Daniels is right. All ammo is non-returnable. If you order ammunition and it doesn't fit, then that's an issue that needs to be addressed with the company. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I agree. But returning it is... Uh... A uh, no-no as far as most ammunition companies go. Yeah, and it's not. It's a safety. It's a safety right. issue or anything. Right. But it's in the. It's in a range according to this chart that Dad's looking at. We kind of compared some of the powders that it's in the same area as. Uh, it's showing benchmark. It's showing Power Pro twelve hundred R two. Well, then there's no benchmark two on well, here. According to this chart, there is. They put this. SMP 735 is equal to a Powder Pro 1200R. Which is right next to Vitavoy N130 and Hodgson H322. 4198's right there as well. So there's your... Uh, so, so... It's a little bit faster than 335, which makes sense. According to so, the so if it's 332, H332... Um, that's a pretty fast powder for mm -hmm. uh, two, two, three. Yeah. Um, and H uh, forty one ninety eight should be real close to that too. Yep. Yeah, um, you're right next to it with Power Pro twelve hundred. 
Right. 4198, 322s right there, all within three or four on the. Uh, and for sure. 100, for 100 rounds at uh, 20, 20 grains uh, a load, um, I dump it. Yep. I wouldn't bother with it. So a little more clarification. He says they offered to give me a refund if I send the rounds back, but it's six five Grendel and I have a hard time finding brass, which is why I ordered the loaded rounds. St. Mark's. Yeah. <coughs> SMP that, makes sense. Yeah, that potter's made by uh, General Dynamics St. Mark's. Save that PDF. That's a nice PDF to have. Kind of pain in the butt to read, but yeah, it's a huge. But it's nice. It tells, breaks down who makes the powder, who owns that powder company. Yeah. Right. Quad, quad father, pull the pull pull the bullets, dump the powder. And you and find a powder that you want to try, and load the load it up with uh, some accurate powder that you can get data for, that you can develop a good load for your six five Grendel. What bullets are in it currently? Does he say? <coughs> um. Also, Quad Father. Um, Mid South Powder Valley both have uh, six five Grendel brass in stock right now. Yeah, everybody I've looked real quick has it in stock. Mid South, so, you said. Um, graphs, but yep. you know, if you want to keep it, keep it. So, I totally get it. Soft points. Let's go. Oh, that's the one I want. The yeah, one. but Paul Loud. <laughs> You're a maniac, remember? So nothing's local to everybody else. <laughs> you should be able to find. So I'm looking on Sierra right now. 335's on there. Huh? What? 824.60. Ain't that like a pounder right here? No. 4064 is what you have. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, A2O XBR. I see every so often. Power Pro Varmint's on there. Reloader 10X. Yeah. So you can, especially 335, you should be able to find 335, and it's a nice, you don't max out for quite a while, depending on what you want to be velocity at. And that's just using uh, Sierra's 130 grain hollow point boat tail. So 335 is a very forgiving powder. Not forgiving by means. It's just very wide range and what it you can, can you charge wise. You you can load four fifty eight wind mag with H three three five. So yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> what is this shipping thing you speak of, Paul? Paul Loud. What is this? Is it like when they put it on a uh, on a uh, horse and buggy? Oh, I was thinking he was going to take that somewhere else. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking, Mike, don't take it there. <laughs> no, we already had that conversation. I know we did. <laughs> Excuse me. So, um, Vemgem, also Alaska Russ one said James Pugh did a review on MeWe a while ago with favorable results uh, on the White River primers. So, because uh, he said they're getting them down in. Um, Australia now, so yeah, I've my buddy of mine did a review on them. They look interesting. Those White Rivers. Only thing is, thinks is they don't make large rifle, but I see yet. So I'm sitting good on everything else. I'm sitting pretty good on large rifle, but ninety percent of why I load anymore is large rifle. So right. Um, I mean, Cabela's has actually been, or my store's actually gotten some in the last few weeks. So. Yeah. But so yeah, I, I would agree, Quad Father, dump it. Make it into make it into uh fertilizer. 
which reminds me now that it's getting warm. I've got to go add some uh, to my wife's rose bushes so they grow well. Because I'm not allowed to burn it anymore after last year's. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear about that, Jason? I did not. Oh, oh you missed that, Jason. Oh, how long did it take your eyebrows to come back? A mm, couple weeks. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, I got a burn barrel. Okay. And I was uh, burning up some old unknown gunpowder that I got in a uh, horse trade. Mm -hmm. And so what I was doing is I was pouring a bit into my hand, putting the cap back on and throwing it back into the F you Instagram. Um, hang on a second here. Dooby dooby doo. I hate Instagram. It sucks really bad. Sorry, gang. Instagram, for whatever reason, decides that we can only live stream for an hour and then it stops and they suck ass. So I have to go through and I have to add it again. And then I have to add the streaming key. I can go live again. Cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Some people jump to. Uh, Vem Jim just says, uh, I prefer making a line and lighting it up. I thought you were going to go somewhere else with the whole lighting a line. <laughs> okay, so we're back live on Instagram. So, um, your burn barrel. So I got a burn barrel and I was burning up some powder. So I was dumping a bit into my hand, uh, putting the cap back on, and then throwing it uh, through for the first bottle. Well, the second bottle, I didn't put the cap back on once. I set it on the ground and got lucky enough to throw and over the edge of the burn barrel down into the container, which was actually it's back in the corner, but I'm not digging it out right now. Um, and it lit the, it's probably at least a half to three quarters of a pound of powder that was in this uh, little blue container. that was about like this tall. Um, and yeah, I got a flash burn mm. on my left hand and then on my face. <clears throat> and I got the usual response from my wife of what the hell are you doing out there? Um, and then she realized that something wasn't quite right because, you know, it was it was a more of a kaboom than just anything. But it was a huge <laughs> flash at the same time. So I was a little shocked shall we say yeah. Yeah. um and i was just doing the usual okay am i do i have all my body parts <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my oh. wife's looking at me and freaking and, and freaking and i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine well anyway um so <laughs> i had a little bit of flash burn on my hand a little bit of flash burn on my face and she made me go to the er and so now i'm not allowed to burn gunpowder anymore Damn it. <laughs> well, normally I burned it in the campfire, so that wasn't a problem, but. <laughs> hey. My dad always said sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I think this is one of those times that that's not true. <laughs> the, only, the only bright spot about that, he wasn't here to laugh at me. Because he's now gone. Right. So that's the only bright spot is he wasn't here to laugh at me about it. Although I'm sure him and my brother were sitting up in heaven going, look at that dumb dumb. <laughs> so. But yeah. So. All right. So what's some of the more advanced equipment we would need for loading straight walls? 
moving away from pistol and a rifle. Well, uh, even some pistol. I mean, yeah, okay, you know the bigger the bigger ones. Uh, I would say uh, a uh, a powder dispenser would would uh, be a, a nice uh, add okay. uh, for it. Um, of course, one of the more accurate ones, uh, you know, the uh, AT4 um, and uh, the Super Trickler and a few others uh, that would work out there. Um, now, I really haven't seen a custom rifle built on one, but uh, they are probably out there. And so you would ha might need some uh, some dies that would uh, more or less um, be more uh, in tune with uh, uh, a, a custom rifle. In other words, uh, more more able to uh, fit your uh, chamber better. Mm -hmm. Um. Then there's other things, uh, bullet selection, you know, measuring bullets and stuff like that, uh, weighing them, uh, going uh, going through and, uh, you know, uh, measuring them to make sure that they're... <laughs> so, so what equipment are we going to want for that? Not necessarily the processes. We'll get into that, but more what equipment are we looking to get? Well... Um, I would say a good set of, uh, micro, uh, a micrometer, regular micrometer, okay. uh, would, would be, uh, something that you would need. Um, you know, a good scale that, you know, that measures the two hundredths of a grain to, for one, for the powder, um, uh, sorting cases, you know, you can. Um, either weigh them or you can uh, fill them with liquid and uh, get a, a case volume and work with that. Based on my experience, filling them and getting case volume is much more efficient um, because not all brass is equal. Okay. Um, they're not all punched the same. Um, they're not all necessarily... I mean, theoretically, if you're purposely buying you know, the same lot, then you're going to be close enough that you could probably weigh them. Um, but not always. I mean, if you're not dropping right. money on, on Lapua um, or Peterson or, you know, Alpha, you, you're probably, I mean, if you're just using some other ones, you're, you're probably going to need to do case capacity. So that means you need to find a primer, uh, some way to plug the primer hole. You can go to uh, 21st Century and get yourself a, a primer plug. A primer plug. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that's that's just kind of the basics of what you might want to do for, uh, you know, for reloading a straight wall case. Um, You're going to want a, a good quality trimmer and... Um, you don't really need, uh, you're not going to really worry about case mouth. Uh, you, you know, you're not, there's no neck turning situations like that. No. Um, but you're going to want to get some uh, primer pocket uh, tools. And, primer pocket tools. And you also probably going to, you know, need a good deburring, uh, deburring tool and uh, a chamfering tool. Uh -huh. um, you know, uh, yeah, I think. You know, uh, a a good primer pocket uh, uh, a primer pocket gauge would uh, help too, um, where you can measure the the pocket depth and uh, and cut your primer pockets to the right depth to a good depth. Um, cases are going to be all over the place. Uh, I don't think anybody makes a straight wall case from uh from one of the high-end brass manufacturers so you're gonna have to stick with somebody like starline to get a if they make it yet uh for um cases uh 
your um, your standard manufacturers, Remington, Winchester, and the like, don't really produce good brass. So you got a lot of work to do to make the brass good. And, and we'll get into that process. Um, right now, we're just kind of uh, going through and talking about some of the extra equipment because that we didn't talk about before. So, but yeah, I mean, so a good digital scale or powder. Well, I mean, you're going to want a good digital scale slash powder dispenser. Mm -hmm. Um uh, you know, if you're really serious, I, in my opinion, even though I have one sitting over my shoulder, an IntelliDropper is not going to cut it. Um, Lyman number six isn't going to cut it. The basic RCBS isn't going to cut it. Um, we're, we're talking that next level. Um, now my scale that's sitting here will cut it. Um, but I, I mean, honestly, if you really want to step up your game, you're going to want to go something that goes to, um, two hundredths of a grain. Yep. Not tenths of a grain. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, probably even some better quality dyes, something with a micrometer, Adjustment adjustment for seating and um, interchangeable seating stems. Yeah, that's uh, you know that's all. It's all all could be part of the uh, of your reloading process for uh, a straight wall case. Um, uh, a custom flare die uh might be needed to uh open mm -hmm. the case up um you know uh a, a taper crimp die that uh that's custom made or one of the um taper crimp dies from reading or so, or somebody like that would uh would would help a lot um You're just you're moving up to the next level in in individual equipment, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe a better press. Um, you know, if you've been getting by with uh, entry level press, uh, maybe stepping up to a better press. Sure, you know, um, there's a there's a number of new presses on the market that uh, and old ones that. Uh, might serve you better yep um you know uh the new nexus press from uh uh um oh, short action customs uh um you get uh a coaxial press uh from forester um you know or uh, area 4119 uh 419 with their uh their one press Mm -hmm. um redding red redding uh and an upgrade to redding uh with their turret would be uh from creedmoor sports with their uh special tool heads um mm -hmm. you know just just things that uh make life a little easier that that are more accurate mm -hmm. for your for your jason how's that mech marksman is that is that good enough to be in that next category or next category no it it's pretty decent for what it is and the price okay. that i paid back back then but i couldn't put it in the next category okay <clears throat> i i uh, honestly you know it's it's not a knock against any of the brands but Lee, RCBS, Lyman, um, we're probably not including in those groups. Um, I, I, you know, you, you've got the Frankfurt Arsenal knockoff of the, of the uh, Forester. That might, I don't know how 
that compares. And I, I shouldn't call it a knockoff, but because uh, that's kind of a bad connotation. I don't know if that press is as good as the Forester is or not. I don't know. But, you know, you're definitely talking that next level um, and you're going to be paying for it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing, if I were to, maybe there is a way like you, to take the next press is the RCBS turret because they also make that uh, Creedmoor Sports adaptive head for the RCBS. Okay. That's where you, I think that's the only RCBS you could probably do in that category. Okay. The only other press that kind of, I guess, maybe see is the new, uh, from Frankfurt, is it the F1 press? Yeah. It's got, it's on, it's on, I think it's on the three bearings. Yeah. So that can, I haven't messed with one personally, so I have, I'm not sure. And normally when you're on those three bearings, I know the Prezi presses that way. Normally that helps with precision reloading. I don't, I, it just I'm trying to think of different ones that would, you could add onto that list. Yeah. Mm, I would also add the summit press in there. Yeah. The summit. Yep. Um, from RCBS. Uh, I use it. It's uh, it's, it, it is very accurate, but there is some tuning to do to it to get it to be accurate. In other words, they're adjusting your, uh, um, your linkages so that there it's it's an accurate press um but uh yeah the um the nexus uh from short action customs i would think is kind of um a, a good press to put you a little above the uh the coax and a little below the area 419 press as a single stage press um easy to change dies out comes with shell holders and uh the price is in the i don't know 700 dollars range which isn't too bad because you're looking at a coax now running about 400 dollars, and uh area 419 is going to run you about 1300 so kind of puts you in the middle there um dies um I'm thinking, you know, reading dies for sizing um, for, for the straight wall cases. And I would uh, lean and, and ask uh, Short Action Customs if their uh, one uh, seating die is, is a doable thing for uh, seating bu bullets in straight wall cases. Um, it's just a thought. All right. In straight walls, especially on the rifle side, there's really, there's a way to take it more precision. I just don't know of a, I've never messed with, I don't know of anybody to really mess with taking Straight wall, truly precision. Off the top of my head, and I don't know really. You really seating is all you can really do. Fi a lot more consistent powder charge. That's really. I don't know that one older gentleman at uh, the one club you used to belong to at the. Uh, uh, oh yeah, trap door where he would take door. what felt like twenty minutes between shots. <laughs> He could he was he could get that forty five seventy to yeah bring a four inch plate at two hundred almost three hundred yards. Yeah, he was pretty good with that. Yeah, a lot of it's a lot of it's going to be similar to when we get into bottleneck later, but it's it's the yeah it is the F one single stage. So, yeah. Um, but a lot of it is going to be your process more than. 
um, necessarily what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the cartridge itself, because I mean, there's only so much you can do to it, but so, but we'll get into that. You know, there's people that are out there shooting thousand yards with 45 seventies. Yeah. What does that match out in Montana? Quigley. Quigley shoot. Yep. Yeah. So. It can be done. So. Yeah. Um, Jeremy from uh, Jeremy Rowland, who was a host uh, in the beginning of the show, um, has a 170 grain cast that he uses in his 3030, and he's shooting, what did he say, like two inches, three inches at 300 yards? Hmm. So. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, the, you know, that's a, a bottleneck, but I mean, it's an idea of expanding out the cartridge. So, but I mean, there's people that are shooting 100 yards with their pistols all day long. Um, you've got revolvers that are shooting 200 yards. So, but. Um. It, I mean, you can get into into weird stuff like paper patching uh, lead uh, bullets and everything else. Um, mm -hmm. There, there, there's a lot of uh, interesting ways to make straight wall cartridges uh, more accurate. Right. So. So, uh, end of March here. Haven't gotten the new April one. Um, I haven't even seen it. Usually they're Easter Bunny themed, but here is your March patch of the month. Uh, you got St. Patrick, or you got the leprechaun there uh, uh, carving it up on a board. It says all luck, no skill, pair of MP5s, and some NVGs. So if I can hold it steady. So he's got that. And as a patch of the month member, you get uh, a picture of Ryan's original drawing, the sticker, and the morale patch. So uh, you can become a Patch of the Month club member through Patriot Patch Company at patriotpatch.co. Or uh, you can swing over to Reloading Podcast and uh, join up there, too. And then help out the podcast a little bit, so. And you can become a Patreon member, too. Yep. So, also, um, you can get yourself one of those fancy shirts like Paul's wearing. Or uh, one of these uh, fancy mugs, uh, tumblers like I got. Um, and I think the rest, of, the rest of the schmucks here on the, on the video screen also have t-shirts and, and, and tumblers. Uh, my t-shirt's in the dirty clothes because I didn't do laundry on Sunday like I normally do because I was slacking on Sunday. So, um, but uh, yeah, so uh, swing over to uh, Southern Gals Crafts. Um, it's uh, located in the show notes of every pay every show. Also, um, it is if you go to firearmsradio.net and go to the we like sh or the uh, reloading podcast page, you can find the link for that. And like I said, you can also find the link for the Patreon um, to be uh, a patch of the month club member through Patreon. So, uh, with the support our show. So, we've got the Facebook and the YouTube and the Instagram and the MeWe links there. Um, I've tried doing a Discord link there, but the problem is... Wow, he's sassy tonight. It's my wife's little tater tot. So now I can hear her yelling upstairs at him to get him back up there. <laughs> anyway, um, Discord sets their links to expire even if you try and keep them from expiring. Um, so I've noticed that even if I set it. So that's why there's no Discord link on the Reloading Podcast page. So... Um, 
But uh, the direct URL to our page is firearmsradio.net slash category slash podcast slash reloading hyphen two. So, but that's all that. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, we're going to start next week. We're going to go into the process for uh, a deeper dive into um straight wall so um usually the deeper dives paul kind of leads because he loves going down rabbit holes and not coming back up (laughs) uh if you hop into discord it's fun to watch him and bench addict or day lover and uh can just go on and on and on it's for you russ in alaska not alaskan russ so um but uh it's definitely something you can tip your dip your toes in the water you can dive head in so um also got to talk about uh sean's awesome camo that he designed uh, Sean Heron of uh, We Like Shooting fame uh, has created his own camouflage, and it's called Camarado. So here is Jason. You should get yourself some of this stuff. So, um, hmm. so he he hunts out in Colorado and stuff, and so the stuff that's out there, um isn't necessarily always that good so uh for what he was looking for so so he said uh, looking for a camo that's as versatile as your adventures and as stylish as your streetwear meet camarado the camo that's changing the game whether you're trekking through the woods or hitting the town camarado's unique pattern is designed to blend in and stand out all at once it's not just camo it's a life choice lifestyle choice that fits anywhere so (laughs) But this is my uh, bucket hat, so I, I like it. So um, we are going to cool. do a $50 gift card giveaway on Discord. So And then uh, for our five, I figured out what I'm going to do with the other $50 gift card. On our 500th episode, which is 10 weeks from today. Uh, anybody and everybody that's tuned in live, we will do a live drawing on the show. So only for the people that tune in live. So that's right. The 500th episode is coming up. Wow. We've only been dinged one time. I know, right? Yeah. What are we doing wrong? I don't know. We just kind of slide (laughs) under the radar. So. But yeah, like I said, uh, we've got uh, all the the fun things that you can do to help out the show. Um, so, yep. I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. Nope, I haven't missed anything. So, so Jason, Jason, glad you could join us. Thank you, sir. Nick and Ray, glad you can join us as usual. Paul, thank you for joining us. Sharonda, thanks for being here. Uh, Jim's commission, computer's still out of commission. I guess he uh, has some sort of... Um, I guess he found somebody on the Geek Squad that's as old as he is trying to do the upgrades. <laughs> so, or, or maybe he, or maybe the guy at Geek Squad's got ter, tertosa, tortosa nervosa. <laughs> Uh, Night Court fans should know what that is. Um, maybe that's the problem. And so the guy's just really slow. So. <laughs> oh. So I don't know. Um, so that's kind of that. Uh, so um, get involved. 
with your local and national organizations, call Congress, uh, call your local and national and your state representatives too. Last Tuesday, uh, the ATF did another one of their lovely little ATF things. And the, uh, I don't remember what his official title is, but basically he's second in command at, um, I believe the Little Rock or, or the Clinton, the Bill Clinton, um, Bill, Bill and Hillary, Bill and Hillary. Don't don't forget her. Oh, is she uh, part of the airport too? Oh, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, the Clinton Airport. Um, he is the second in. He was the second in command. Um, anyway, the ATF was uh, building a case on accusing him of selling firearms without an FFL. They knew where he worked. Um, but yet they showed up at his house at six o'clock in the morning with his family there, uh, loaded to bear. And, um, needless to say, when they tried to come through the door, a gunfight ensued and, uh, the person that they were there to, um, get, or if they were just executing a search warrant that has not been cleared up on whether they were just there to execute a search warrant or if they were there to actually arrest him. Search warrant. Uh, I read it. Search okay. Warrant. So they were there at execute a search warrant instead started a firefight and it wound up with the guy dead. So, yep. Um, and nobody's saying a word about it. So just like some of their previous uh, high quality things, um, they're getting away with it. Yeah. They could have, they knew where he worked and when he would be there. Uh, they had given no indication they could have showed up at his work and said, Hey, um, you know, we're going to, they could have shown up at eight o'clock and knocked on the door yep. eight o'clock in the morning and knocked on the door and said, ATF, mm -hmm. we have a search warrant instead of breaking the door down. Yep. And, uh, like you're going to get rid of 197 guns, flushing them down the toilet. Yeah. So. I mean, uh, um, so we need to get a hold of whether it's the federal level, especially the federal level, and let our Congress critters know that we don't think that's an okay way to operate, um, and that there needs to be some sort of oversight. Um, you you don't hear about the U.S. Marshals and other or federal level organizations having as many issues as the ATF does. So, um, but you know, this is also getting to be election time. Uh, you're going to, unfortunately we're going to start getting an inundated with our daily doses of bullshit, AKA the TV ads. Um, and it's our job to make sure that we understand what's truth and what's not. So, who's playing with their microphone? I'm not. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> playing with the button in the back. There's no button. That's a little switch, whatever you want to call There's it. There's no switch. Ten kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were. I'm turning the They're little picking knob. it up. That is not getting picked up. Uh, so two two kids over there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm going to NRA convention. So, uh, if anybody else is going, let me know. We'll meet up. Uh, uh, say hi. The tickets went on sale for Gun Con tonight. I wasn't going to mention that, but because by the time this episode airs, they'll probably be sold out. They went on three days last year. So. But he had more, I know that he said. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if they're still available, it's 50 bucks. Uh, Guncon.net. Um, you get uh, entry and <clears throat> you get to tune into all the panels. Um, you get a special edition t-shirt and you get a lunch from one of the food trucks and the food trucks have been amazing. And um, there'll be all the, a lot of the industry will be there too. 
Yeah, so there's a lot of companies playing. that are going to be there that you could wander around and talk to them face to face. And so we'll be there. We'll be there. And mm-hmm. uh, Frank for Arsenal will be doing a reloading seminar. I was mm-hmm. on the website today. So. Yep. So, yeah, they did one last year too. So they had the X10 there, um, did a full reloading seminar. They also had the F1 there. So, and a bunch of their other cool toys. So, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that's there. A lot of suppressor companies last year. And uh, some of your bleeding edge technology, uh, like night vision or infrared type stuff. So it was pretty cool. Um, and you get to sit there and they have seminars and then also you just get to walk around and ask the people questions. So, I mean, that's kind of the best part is and if you got to go behind the scenes of Brownells, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're actually in Brownells warehouse. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's definitely a good opportunity. It's, uh, June 29th. So, um, just a quickie, uh, if anybody is looking for uh, for a form four for their uh, suppressor, do it now. Yeah, do it now. Um, turnaround time has been uh, for some people has been in the hours. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you want a suppressor, you might want to go try it now. Yeah. What? That's crazy. That's I was talking to a buddy that uh, shop he used to work at out in Oregon. He, a friend of his went in and had his done in two hours. Right. The form four was back. Yep. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. I know the shop yeah. here locally. Boy that works at it. He said they've been getting um about four to five days is the average right now. It's still quick. So, yeah. Wow. Compared to nine months, a nine year. months a year, <laughs> yeah. So, and that's now that's not for trust, guys. That's just for single user, you know. Just so you know, it's just it's not a trust. Um, those take longer. Yeah. Um, but if you want one, now's the time. So, yeah, another shout out. If we uh, pray for the uh, New York PD officer that lost his life, pray for his family. And yeah, they're going to have a struggle on their hands with Red Winter leaving the family. So, man, just out doing his job, yeah. protecting the community, loses his life. Yep. All right, gang. I had one other thing here. Shut I read, up. I, yeah. I, I read an article, an anti gun article, and they were complaining about how that guns are used in only 3% in defensively, okay, in the population. And they were telling how little that is. And if you take 320 million people, and multiply it by 3%, that's 900 million people use a gun defensively. Mm-hmm. And they were saying it was such a small percentage. And I think 900 million, uh, 9 million people would say that uh, a pr- that percentage is a pretty big percentage. Mm-hmm. Of the population that's three percent per year use a, a gun defensively well the other thing with that fact is that's suspect because um 2017 2018 they did a study on that and found out that that number is low yes i believe it too you know so but the but problem I'm, is they can't really prove what the actual is i i'm just saying they said three percent Mm -hmm. in this article and that's still 9 million people so if i took a gun away from those people yeah there's 9 million people would have been harmed Mm -hmm. physically harmed um 
so uh, I wrote a I wrote a, a rebuttal to them, and uh, I just if you see something like that, write a rebuttal to it. Yeah, just you know, get out there and do something. Yeah. So. All right, gang. Uh, once again, shout out to Patriot Patch Company and Camarado and Southern Gales Crafts for all they do for the show. Thanks to all our Patreons. Um, just, you know, we're grateful. 10 years. Mm-hmm. 490 shows. So, um, join us next week when we start our deep dive into... Uh, straight wall and kind of really show you what you can do if you want to get serious. So, um, and, and why it's beneficial even on a straight wall. So, um, on that note, keep your brass shiny, jump on the mill strip short bus, teach them to shoot and reload when they're young. Grandpa told me, don't listen to your mama. Violence does solve problems. Be an asset, not a liability. Or or keep your powder dry. Or keep your powder dry, but don't that's like way out of sync. So I just <laughs> didn't go there. Nick um, jumped on his so fast I didn't have a chance. <laughs> it's been so long, I can't remember the order. I know, I get it. <laughs> yeah, well. Um key as I said and mentioned earlier. Call Congress, call your local representative, call your uh, state reps, uh, get involved with your local organizations and your national organizations. Just uh, make sure you're keeping abreast of what's going on. Um, They're sneaking through stuff all the time. I don't, we don't go into a lot of politics, but uh, it's out there. Take a look, check it out. We still are fighting for it, gang, because they're still trying to push through laws that shouldn't be pushed through, and then we got to fight it in court. And then we're it's costing us double because they're using our taxpayer money for the government end, and then we've got to come up with more money to fund our end of it. So <coughs> we can keep them from passing the laws in the first place. That's a better option. Uh, most importantly, uh, if you're struggling, mental health is important. Uh, make sure you... Uh, Reach out, 988 or 1-800-273-8255. Uh, reach out, get some help. It's a good place to start, and they'll get you on the path. So on that note, good night. Night, all. Good night.